If you want to keep repeating one section of a time selection, you can put it in loop mode, and you can do that either with the button by the transport here, that looks like part of a circle with an arrow on the end. Easier and quicker is to hit the Q key on your keyboard, and you'll see that the time selection, when it's in loop mode, now the top bar turns to a dark blue, so I'll toggle that on and off. You can see it's kind of a gray. Hit the Q key, and that is blue. And so now, instead of playing once, this is going to keep playing forever. Which can be annoying to everyone around you. I'll take looping off, and then zoom in a little bit here. So if you want to modify a time selection you've made, if you hover the mouse right over the edge, you see it turns from the arrow to a back and forth arrow, and you can just click there and drag back and forth. You can do that either on the timeline here or actually even up at the top and grab those little yellow triangles and create your time selection area. If you want to jump back and forth between the beginning and end of your time selection, you can use the home and end keys on your keyboard. So right now the cursor is flashing on the endpoint, and that's what's being displayed in the preview. If you hit the end key on your keyboard, it's going to jump to the end. Now this is pretty handy if you're looking to edit out a piece of video and you're trying to define an area that you're going to delete, and we'll cover that later. But if you want to just kind of jump back and forth between the beginning and end and see the, exactly the parameters of what you're defining there, that's a pretty handy key combo to be aware of. Also, if you want to extend the, either the in or the out points, if you were to click and hold the shift key, that would extend the in or out point. So, important to realize that if you do that click and shift operation, it's going to act on the side that is blinking. So, if I click to the left of this, as I just did, shift click, it extends it. If I were to shift click entirely to the right of the time selection, it would kind of fold over that endpoint all the way past its original position all the way over so you're kind of flipping it over which is one way to use the time selection by dragging and then making the endpoint become the out point and vice versa so sometimes if you're looking for a selection you might find your out point first and then grab the endpoint and move it over there so I'm gonna shift click to the right here since the cursor was blinking on the out point, it simply extends it out a little bit further. Also, you can grab a time selection by the bar and slide it up and down a timeline. And notice also it's serving a double function here of scrubbing through the footage as that's happening. Now, one thing that can be handy is suppose you want to define a certain duration and time and uh, cut that piece out. Well, you can just drag the duration. Let's say I want to select two seconds. And now I've, I'm looking at the readout in the bottom right. This is a two second time selection. I can hit the uh, S key to split. And now it splits the video at both the in and out points at the same time. And from here I can delete out that two seconds. I'm going to undo here. Or you can delete what's left over. A real easy way to do that is create a time selection, then hit Control T, and that's exactly what it does. It just keeps the part of your project that's within the time selection and deletes everything else. That's a powerful thing, especially if that's not what you want to happen. It's pretty handy if that's what you want to accomplish. So again, I Control Z. Never any need to panic when you have your Control Z handy. And here's another little handy trick. If you want to edit a certain section and zoom in just on your selected area you can hit control up arrow and a timeline will zoom in automatically just to your time selection plus a little extra on the beginning and the end so that's a real handy way of adjusting your zoom level based on what area you define there Vegas also remembers the last five time selections you've created. So let's see, I'll do a little one here, and maybe a bigger one here, and one here, and one here. And now I'm going to hit the backspace key, and every time I do that, it's just going to toggle between the last five time selections. 
So one way that's really handy is let's say you have a time selection set up and then you accidentally click somewhere else and oops, your time selection has gone. Well, for one thing, you've left behind this bar on the top of the ruler and you can just double click on that. Or you can just simply hit the backspace key and back you are to that last time selection. Or suppose you want to go to the one before that. It's still in the buffer there. We can use this to our advantage on a little trick here. If you were to be working on a certain part of a project, and let me get the keyboard out of the way here. Let's put another video clip in. And let's say I am working over here and I have a time selection and then I'm over here now I needed to check something okay I'm ready to go back to where I was well if I hit the backspace key that's gonna bring me right to that time selection the timeline hasn't visually brought us there because it hasn't updated this way but if you ever want the cursor to be in the middle of your view and I'll bring up the keyboard to show you this you can hit your backslash key which in most cases is right above your enter key that brings your view of the timeline right where the cursor is at any time. You can even do this while it's playing.